15 months ago, we applied a ceramic coating to this Forerunner. It's back in for our maintenance detail. Now this customer has been bringing back his vehicle every three months to make sure that it is in tip top shape. So we're gonna wash it today and show you guys how to safely maintain ceramic coatings. And this can apply to any vehicle that is well protected that you're maintaining, whether you waxed it, sealed it, put a ceramic spray coating or a full blown ceramic coating. If you're enjoying videos like this and I hope you are, consider subscribing and clicking that bell so you don't miss stuff. And if you are a detailer who owns a detailing business, then watch this video all the way through. You're gonna pick up a lot of points and tips that I share with other detailers. Now let's take a quick look around. The vehicle came in last night and it has been to the beach, it's been to the mountains, it's been everywhere. And the interior definitely needs some help as well. When you're vacationing in your vehicle, it tends to get kind of gross. What are some of my favorite interior tools to get this out? I'll show you. Mmm. And we have kiddos that live in the back seat. Ah, oh, dirty dog. So with kiddos in the back seat, ew, we're dealing with all sorts of stuff. I think it's just milk though. We'll show you how to clean that up. Now one tip, when you are removing child seats like this, make sure to tell the customer that you're not gonna put them back in. Maybe it's your choice, maybe you know how to do that, but it could be a liability let the owner put these back in. It's their responsibility. This is actually in my agreement form as well. Now for cleaning up the Forerunner, we're gonna use AM Detail's Wax Safe Snow Foam. This is excellent as a pre-wash. And as a topper, we're gonna to use their Hybrid Detailer. We could actually choose their Hybrid Sealant as well. These work on ceramic coatings, but I'm gonna choose this one today because, well, I like it. For the actual shampoo, I'm going to use their AM Details Hybrid Shampoo, which, oh, I gotta get some more. And to clean the wheels, I'm gonna use Purist Wheel Cleaner. This is a pH neutral, effective wheel cleaner. Now, do you have to use two different foam cannons to do this? No, you don't. You can actually mix this in the IK Foamer. I simply have something else in the IK Foamer right now. So that's why I'm choosing to just put it in a foam cannon. It does make it a little bit easier right now. Now for the pre-wash, we are going to foam the entire vehicle down with the AM Snow Foam first. Dry, no pre-rinsing. Why are we doing that? Simply to demonstrate that it can be done. You can see that we are in partial shade. We're not in full sun. It's actually a little chilly out. So it's perfect to do this. When we're in the full sun in the middle of summer, we don't do this. We wanna pre-rinse the vehicle, especially if it is hot to the touch. So allow the snow foam to dwell. Again, this is an effective way to pre-wash, especially for ceramic coatings, because if you do have any grit on the bottom surfaces, you want to get that removed. Some might be on the top surfaces as well, but dirt, grime, traffic film tends to accumulate halfway below the vehicle here. So kind of imagine a line going halfway through the vehicle and the bottom sections are going to be the worst. So after rinsing down all of the snow foam, allowing it to dwell, this is what we're left with. The surface is actually very clean. 
And you can see the hydrophobics. Yeah, pretty awesome. Even on the sides, all the way down to the bottom, the hydrophobics are doing really well. And even the wheels look pretty decent. We'll clean them further, but the hydrophobics look great. So now that everything is effectively pre-washed, let's foam it down again and contact wash. Now, when you're maintaining a ceramic coating, you wanna have really good wash mitts. I pull out my nice dedicated plush wash mitts that are just for maintaining vehicles. I do have some other older mitts that are, well, they're not grungy, but they're definitely reserved for nasty vehicles, but I reserve nice mitts for maintenance vehicles. So I'll have some links down below for some really nice wash mitts. Or if you already have wash mitts that you love, that, that are your favorite, let me know down below. So I didn't even scrub the mats. We simply applied the snow foam, allowed it to dwell for a couple of minutes, and then blasted it off. The pressure from the pressure washer was enough. That looks incredible. Even the doggy prints. We'll see what they look like when they dry. So there's a little bit of some smudge on the paint here and on the trim, and it kind of looks like either tar or sometimes gum. Gum will be on the road, your tires will fling it up, and it will turn into like a spaghetti string and whip onto your vehicle. I'm sure you've seen these weird long strands before. Sometimes it's gum, sometimes it's tar, sometimes it's, you know, the tar from the asphalt or some sort of gross stuff that has flung onto your paint. Now everything's ceramic coated. How do you remove that? How do you remove it? How does you do that? How does you do do? Do do? So we have Purist's tar remover. We're gonna use that. This is coating safe, allow it to dwell. It's a very strong solvent, but it's dedicated to removing these types of petroleum-based gum, tar, stuff like that. Allow it to dwell, give it some time, and then gently agitate. Don't be too aggressive. Don't use anything too harsh or aggressive on the paint. Let the chemical do the work, it will dissolve. There we go. Now it looks good. There, now the tar is removed. It's not going to affect your coating. You're good to go. Now the vehicle is clean. The coating is responding really well. Again, over a year. Do you wanna know what coating we used? Check out the video in the card that I pointed to in the beginning of the video. Bugs are removed safely. Really, they didn't even have a chance. Nothing even stuck to the coating, which is awesome. The customer does a great job of maintaining his ceramic coated vehicle. So for maintaining the coating, we're going to use a topper. Some don't like that term, I'm gonna use it because I use that term and it works for me. Essentially, it's using another ceramic based type of spray to apply on top of the existing ceramic coating. Now with AM Detail's hybrid detailer, it can be applied dry or wet. It aids with drying and adds another hydrophobic layer.
Now, when you're done cleaning your wheels and maybe the coating is not doing as well, again, it's been over a year, black wheels will tend to heat up, of course, a little bit more, and it could kill the coating. I can see that the coating was doing okay around the middle area than the outer uh, area of the wheel, starting to show signs of failure. But you know what? We can top it off using something like this. Basically, it's a spray-on hydrophobic ceramic layer. So Suds Lab came out with this ceramic hydro coat. Simply spray it on, get all of the surfaces, let it sit there for like five to 10 seconds and then rinse it off. So now you can blow dry them and continue with the rest of your detail. So here's a big blob of tar that I located on the rear wheel well. Let's obliterate it with some tar remover from Puris. Let it dwell, and this may take a couple applications because it's so thick. And again, just gently agitate. Let the chemical do the work. Sometimes the tar will actually have like a crust on it. And once you dissolve that top crust, now you can see it dissolving which is awesome, I love to see that. Again, just keep slowly dissolving it and agitating, and eventually it will all come loose. So just keep agitating it gently. If you need to spray a little bit more, go ahead, it'll help dissolve it more. Use the chemical to dissolve it and don't over agitate, don't use anything too aggressive. Now for the interior, you have a couple of choices. This choice is something you can buy locally. It's super affordable. It's an effective cleaner and disinfectant. Awesome for your DIY guys or even your customers. You can send them links to this product. I'll have all the links down below as well. But it's great for disinfecting, great for cleaning. And I'm going to use this on the milk stains on that back seat and door. Now I have some other choices. AM Details APC is designed for interior and exterior. It also has an enzyme formulated into it that will dissolve organic matter. It's great as a bug remover, but also as interior cleaning and disinfecting. You can get a little fancy with Puris. This is their two-in-one leather cleaner. So this cleans and leaves behind protection, conditions the leathers and plastics. This is also a good choice, a little bit more on the pricey side, but again, if you're looking for a really nice kind of a boutique product, this would be the one. Now here's another interesting option that you can offer to your customers. In fact, you can pick these up and even sell it to them. This is from Glovebox RX. You see that little cartridge in here? These you can buy separately. They're cheap and you can basically just fill up your bottle again with water. As you see, I've already used all of this. I'm gonna fill it with water up to about the line here where it indicates and then drop this guy in and check out what happens. So this cartridge is used up, you can actually recycle it. So I filled it up to the line, you pop the cartridge in like so, and then when you put your straw and the trigger into this, you'll notice that when you screw this top down, it will open up the seal and release all the cleaner into your bottle, just like that. You can see it going in there. Give it a little bit of a shake, and you'll see the cleaner diluting into your bottle. Everything is pre-diluted in this little concentrated cartridge, ready to go. Now, is this designed for the professional detailer in mind? No, it's not. It's designed for the consumer in mind. Don't get that confused. So you might see these products and think to yourself, oh, that's too expensive. I want gallon forms. Yes, that's fine. You can get gallon forms if you want. I'm giving these options for people who want to do it themselves or enthusiasts, and they don't want to buy gallon forms of product. They just need something small. This would be great for your customers. They're not detailing their vehicle. They're washing it and maintaining it in between your details. So this would be something great to offer to them. So give it a shake, we're ready to go. Now for the interiors, I like to use the interior cleaner with a damp towel, not a dry towel. This will actually help spread the product out a little bit better and the damp towel helps with cleaning the surfaces a lot better as well, at least in my opinion. It's also good to have a quality brush. Now, you can actually dampen this brush a little bit. I don't want it soaking wet, but just a little damp with a little bit of chemical in it. And it's great for cleaning all of these crevices. 
or crevasses. Now for these areas, I love to use grout brushes like this to agitate. Of course, the first part, get all of the nasty stuff up first. Anything that's left over, agitate with your brush. up the mats to dry and we noticed something about that rear mat where the doggy prints were. Oh no, they came back. Well, that's okay. Let's go a little bit more aggressive. We're gonna use the Purist all-purpose cleaner. Simply apply and agitate with a brush. You can also use a drill brush for this, but you know, it's over there and I'm over here already with this brush, so I'm just going to attack it by hand. This is a damp towel to rinse the product away. And then a dry towel. I'm gonna let it air dry. Ah, that's better. Interior is looking great. A few final touches, glass, and a little bit of conditioning. We're using this product from Meguiar's. That is a really nice consumer brand product, but we still like to use some of those products just because we enjoy them and they work really well. Ah, oh, this area is nice and clean. So guys, here's a tip I wanna share with you. And it may sound simple, but if you already have a detailing business, you will know that an air compressor is your best friend. You can have multiple tools to help you clean out the interiors. You can use it on the exterior, but I primarily use my air compressor tools for the interior of the vehicle. It makes the process that much faster and more efficient. Now, there are some things to keep in mind when you're using an air compressor on the interior. Now, you may see some guys blasting the interior with a tornador or a blower, and it makes a big mess. Yeah, it will loosen up everything in the carpet and in the fibers, but it does tend to blow it up into the air and make a big mess. Now I do that every once in a while on really bad vehicles, but here's the tip. Do that before you do anything else to the vehicle, even washing it, because it's going to create a plume of dust and particles that go everywhere. So I don't always do it. It's only dedicated to vehicles where when I open that door and see the interior, it's horrible. Before I wash it, before I do anything else, that's the very first thing that I do. It's kind of a two-edged sword because it creates this big plume of mess and it can get onto the dashboard and everything else, but it also makes the vacuuming process that much faster and easier for carpets and upholstery. So a lot of people will choose not to do that because it does make that mess, but other detailers use it because it is very efficient. So if you're gonna blow out the interiors like that, determine if you need to do that right from the beginning. Because if you've washed the car and now you're gonna blow out the interior, all that dust and particles and junk and even dog hair, it's gonna blow out of the vehicle and settle on your nice clean vehicle. The way that I usually like to use the air compressor is I do my initial brushing and vacuuming. True, you can use a drill brush, but again, that can actually cause a lot of 
dirt and particles to flick up into areas that you just cleaned, or on some delicate carpets, it can actually start to damage them. So be careful. Even the softest bristles on the drill brush, it's the action of the drill brush that can cause some issues. You can also put that drill brush onto a dual action polisher, and that's a little bit more gentle. Plus that vibrates sand and particles to the surface. So that's another point. But what I like to do is initially brush and vacuum and then use that air compressor tool, either the Tornador tool or just the regular nozzle to get into all the areas that I couldn't reach, blowing out under all of the seats to get all those particles out. Then you'll have to move the seat forwards and backwards to clean all those areas and vacuum them all up. But this way it doesn't create a plume of dust and particles that go everywhere controlling your cleaning area will make a big difference. I like to work in small controlled areas, which means I focus on one section at a time, vacuuming and blowing everything out. Then I move on to the next section. This means that when you're cleaning that next section, you may blow with the air compressor junk into your area that you just cleaned. Don't worry, it happens. You're detailing a vehicle and things like that are going to happen. So you may just have to go back and forth a little bit and clean those areas that you just cleaned because you're blowing particles into those areas. But remember, you're cleaning under the seats. Things are going to be released that you didn't see before that are stuck under there, so it's going to happen. Now you can remove the seats if you want, but remember that's a liability and have your customers sign some sort of a waiver.